Hello, this is Patrick W. Crawford, MUAC Productions, and this is going to be a little video about an add-on project I started at SIGGRAPH uh, this earlier this summer, this past summer rather, and it's called Blender Effectors, sort of inspired by a Cinema 4D feature I actually saw. So you can get it at the link here, I'll have it in the description below. Uh, it has a little bit of a readme, but I'm going to walk you through what it actually does. So if you go to this GitHub uh, page, you can click download zip here, that will download. And then over here, I'm going to just unzip it so I have the folder. And then inside of Blender, like you would for any add-on, go to Add-ons, Install from File, navigate to wherever it may be, and not there, that one, and just effector.py. So now I install it. So, and then obviously check it there. All right, so then it shows up over here. And what this add-on does, um, it basically acts as a sort of assistant to motion graphics effects. I have like a very short video to show you kind of what it can do. Um, this is an example of it running based off of Suzanne the monkey and kind of shows you what it can possibly do. It's a way of turning individual uh, faces of a mesh into animatable and sort of manipulatable objects easily. So I'll do a short example of what that does. So here I'm just adding a plane and scaling it up some. Um, I'm going to go into edit mode and subdivide it several times. Uh, maybe one less just so it runs a bit faster. So over here I will click, let me actually apply the scale just to be sure. I'm gonna click separate faces, that's one of the basic features. Then I'm going to click add effector. All right, so what it's doing here is it's basically setting up a bunch of constraints and drivers in the back end and adding, you, adding for you a control object here. So this is your control armature. It is an armature. So if you go down here into pose mode, you have the ability to control um, what it does. So in this middle part here, um, you have the center transform control object or whatever you want to call it. I guess I call it control over here. Um, if you move this around, um, it will affect directly how everything else in the scene is translated or moved or whatever. So I can rotate it. I can scale it and I can move it around. This object here controls the fall off and the location of uh, influence, I guess. So for example, if I have this object here and I move it upwards, this object, whatever object here that has the effector added is close to will be affected by that. So if I move this around, it will change where the influence is on this object, as you can see there. It also uh, affects the fall off of the effect. So if I scale it outwards, it'll affect more objects. And so more of it uh, ends up being transformed according to this object up here. If I scale it down, fewer things are uh, you know affected by it. These little empties here are used to help do the transformation, but also shows where the origin of the object actually is. So for example, if I move this object to the exact center of one of those empties, you can see that it's gonna have the maximum deformation or basically a copy of the transformations of this object here. Um, so there's lots of applications of this. A lot of things are pretty cool. Uh, if I actually select empties there, oops, sorry. Select empties, just kind of hide those for a moment and select all these things. I'm just gonna quickly add a solidify modifier because it looks a little bit cooler um, when you have that. So move that down then going to control L and then copy modifiers. That's a quick tip if you don't know that already, it's a useful tool. Um, so now if I move this around and give it some transformation, you can do some pretty cool things. So for example, that same effect um, where I have it kind of just offset like that, um, that looks pretty cool. Um, when you do it like just in the middle of rotation, um, you can do a lot of really cool motion graphics effects with this as you can see. Let's move it around like that. Uh, maybe it's actually a bit easier if I do a matte cap. Uh, ah, there we go. All right, and I'll do like I don't know, gold or something. All right. So now if I move this around, you can kind of see it a little bit better. And so you can do a bunch of really cool things with that. What I showed you before was with Suzanne. Um, it was the exact same thing where I used a the monkey object and split the faces and doing that. I can show you another example with a isosphere. So same thing. I separate the faces. I add a vector. And then you can see it added it to, it's a little bit hard to see actually. Um, here's the object, again your control. So now if I scale this in, again it copies all those faces and it works pretty cool. Um, so you can do it for example if you want like a wall to open up when you get close to it for example. Um, 
or you know it's sort of endless possibilities of course um, one cool thing is that it does work um, with let's move this over here um, like recursive or like multiple effectors on the same object so same here I'm just selecting one of the faces I'm subdividing a couple of times again and I'm adding an effector to this one as well and they both can work at the same time so you have multiple effector objects so this one is affecting um, the overall sphere whereas this one is affecting in addition to the influence of this one um, the pieces there so you see they're copying the rotation and so if I move this over here maybe scale it down just so you can see it a bit better I um, you can see that as this one moves upwards more um, the change of the rotation and transformation of these ones also move because they're moving relative to the other one so up here it has a fewer lower influence because it's farther away from this source but as we move this back over here it increases the influence again because it's close to the center object here uh, there rather um, so that in the gist is what this add-on does um, you can do a lot of cool things with it and yeah it was a fun thing to produce the way it's basically working is that if you select any one of these objects you can go over here to constraints you see you have several three constraints not several three exactly for location rotation and scale and they have associated drivers set up you can see what those drivers look like if you go over here to drivers maximize and click any one of these look at the tab over there um, it basically is doing an equation between the center of that control object and that objects empty and there's an equation for the falloff um, if I'm going to do more of this add-on, I would actually, you know, improve this menu here to have it so that there were multiple effectors. You could like select the different effector objects like so and be able to um, go between them, as well as like, you know, update the um, the fall off, for example, in different ways. So you can see, I click that; it actually doesn't do anything because I haven't implemented that. Um, so yeah, this is a little project I work on. So. A final note I will say is that the reason I'm sort of doing this video now and not like a month ago when I first created it is because I originally thought I was going to do a lot more with it, but I came across another add-on called the Motion Tool. All right, so small disclaimer, I'm not associated to Blender Market or the people who developed this add-on, um, but I noticed that uh, in their demo video, which you'd watch here, you know, that's the product name and watch the video there. Um, towards the end of that video, um, there's a feature of this add-on that does exactly what I'm doing here, except they do it better, basically. And um, it's done with Node, so it's like procedural animation via Node, which is really cool. So I don't think I'm going to continue too much to develop with this add-on unless it's just you know huge requests for one thing or if it's really easy to do another thing. Um, but you can already do a lot with this. But if you want to get into really advanced procedural animation and doing cool transformation things like this uh, at a more professional level, then yeah, okay, it costs $45. But as you can see, a lot of people find this um, a very useful, good tool. And these are the people who made the Bool tool. So like these, they are very good at software and you know, important part of the Blender community. So I would support them and do that. But mine, of course, is open source. It's free. Um, so you can go to the GitHub account and download it and that's free to use. Or if you even want to modify it and work on it further, obviously that's encouraged if I'm not going to be doing too much with it. Um, I just have enough other projects that I'm going to be focusing on instead of this one. But, so that's all there is for this video. Quick demo of something cool that I worked on a little while ago. I hope you enjoy it. And if you have any questions or comments of how to use or modify, um, feel free to ask. I can't guarantee I'll be, you know, full dev support, um, but I'll do what I can. All right, till next time. Thanks. Muak.